Hello and welcome back. My name is EVM and this is about electric vehicle tariffs and which is the cheapest for you. Now this is a very difficult thing to figure out as with anything because everyone is different. There are many variables and EV specific tariffs tend to be ones that aren't just a flat rate where you take the price of electricity times it by how much you use, add the standing charge and then you're done. It's got a time of day tariff calculation that needs to be factored in. How much will you use off peak? How much will you use during the peak and that changes everything especially when you're charging an electric vehicle that can make use of that cheap period for those that are unaware what a time of day tariff is essentially i'll use octopus intelligent as an example i'm about to go on to that you have six hours at the current price of seven and a half pence and 18 hours at 38 and a half pence ish so the idea is you'll pay more for during the day essentially but a lot less for a small window. So if you can make use of that small window, i.e. charging a car up at night, then it will be cheaper. Even though the house is paying more, the car will be paying substantially less. So it more than offsets it. I've done a spreadsheet. So in the description below, there will be a link to this spreadsheet, and then you can do your own more specific calculations because I'm using averages of averages of averages, and it's a, it's a broad stroke, isn't it? You have to do a bit of work yourself and this is no different. All you have to do is click on the link in the description for the Excel spreadsheet, file save as, save it to your computer and use Google Sheets or Excel and modify it accordingly. So if you have an EV or you're thinking about getting one, which is the cheapest tariff that's targeted at you right now? Now, as this is YouTube and you have to show your workings out and prove everything you say, I'll be showing you that right now in terms of how I've done the calculations. If you don't want to watch this, then just skip to the bit at the end. As I said, I've done averages of averages. So according to Ofgem in the UK, the average house uses 2,900 kilowatt hours in a year, which equates to roughly eight, just under eight kilowatt hours per day or 242 kilowatt hours per month. So that is the average amount of house consumption in these calculations. And out of all that, I've picked a peak consumption of 60% and a cheap rate consumption of 40%. So given the four, five, six hours, depending on which time of, which time of day tariff you're on, 40% of everything the house uses will be done at that cheap rate. Now this is pretty easy to do with load shifting to those cheaper periods. So for example, if you do use eight kilowatt hours a day, as an example, then one kilowatt hour roughly for a washing machine, one and a half maybe for a dishwasher, up to four for a tumble dryer. Then if you use their built-in timers, assuming it's got one must do these days, then it's easy to shift three, maybe four kilowatt hours to that cheap nighttime period, 40% of your electricity or 96.8 kilowatt hours for the purposes of these calculations will be at the cheap rate and 145 kilowatt hours per month are at the peak rate. Now, when it comes to the car, again, little more complicated, an EV statistically does more miles than a petrol car. But that's also another factor, I think. A brand new car does about 10,000 miles per year in its first three years. So, it tends to be the more miles you do, the bigger the chances that you've got a newer car because you're probably doing more miles. And certainly at the moment, most EVs are under kind of three, four, five years old. So on average, an EV does more than the UK average, which is about seven and a half thousand miles a year. This is also the mileage that you charge from home using. This is ignoring the public charging infrastructure because that's nothing to do with your home charging tariff, but ultimately, 9,345 miles is the uh, average I've picked. That's 779 miles per month. At an average of three and a half miles per kilowatt hour, that means you will use, on average, 225.5 kilowatt hours per month, averaged out, just charging your electric vehicle at home. I think that's simple. Again, based on my own consumption and speaking to many other people out there, out of all the charging you do at home, 95% of it will be done at the cheap rate. This is easily done with either the car's timer 
or the charges timer. You can just say charge at the cheap period please or pick the hours and it does it from that. My statistics, and bear in mind I do close to 25,000 miles a year, are about 97.8, I think it is, percent charging done at the cheap rate. So only 11.3 kilo hours of that 225 is done at the more expensive rate a month. That's just when I kind of get home, plug in, and have to do a quick boost for whatever reason before we set off or something. But yeah, 95%, I've knocked it down, 214 kilowatt hours per month at the cheap rate, and 11.3 at the more expensive rate. Let's see now which is cheapest. I will then do a second table based on a higher mileage, because the more miles you do, the cheaper these sorts of tariffs become. Here we are. Total peak usage, 156 kilowatt hours. Total off peak or cheap usage, 311. This is based on the 9.3 thousand miles a year average use that I just shown you. So the cheapest is clearly, in this case, Octopus Intelligent Tariff. Now, just very briefly, if you are thinking or you do switch to Octopus Energy, whatever the tariff, there is a referral link in the description below and I'll put it as a pinned comment as well, but essentially you get £50 added to your account and so do I. So it's win-win really. So if this channel's helped you out in any way, then please do use that referral. So £1,205, which gives us an average pence per kilowatt hour, once you factor in the standing charge as well, of 21 pence per kilowatt hour. Go down to the bottom, the price gap, just as a comparison, because some people, you know, a lot of people are still on this. Well, you can see you're over £800 worse off. So if you use an electric vehicle in this example as an average of an average, then being on the price gap is a very bad thing. You want to switch to something like Octopus Intelligent or Octopus Go, depending on if your car or charger supports Intelligent. And that's one caveat. You have to have a car or charger that supports it. Otherwise, the next cheapest is Octopus Go at 23 pence per kilowatt hour. The main difference is Octopus Intelligent is a bit cheaper and you get six hours instead of four. Now the Ovo tariff, that's quite an interesting one. You can charge the EV at any time for the cheap rate uh, if you use the smart functions anyway, but the house doesn't get any of the cheap tariff usage. Whereas with Octopus, you do. You, you, that four or six hours is for anything, not just the car. Whereas the over one is just the car. Now, if you're on a flat rate tariff, such as Octopus Tracker, which is now becoming a lot more popular because it's actually a decent price. It's around the 21, two pence, I think last I looked. And that's a flat rate. That's day and night. So this is what, this is key to figuring out. If you're on go 23 pence and you can get a 22 pence per kilowatt hour uh, flat rate, well, clearly that flat rate will be cheaper. So I use this as a guide. I can't put every single tariff in. The octopus tracker is a good idea, but it could also go up as much as down. So this is where your own figures come in. If you use the spreadsheet I've given you, you can then adapt this to your specific usage. But as I said earlier, the more miles you do, the cheaper these tariffs become compared to a flat rate tariff. So let me now add about 50% off peak usage. So everything stays the same, only the electric car driver isn't doing 9.3 thousand, they're doing roughly 50% more than that. Let me put those details into the spreadsheet and then show you the difference in terms of pence per kilowatt hour. So I'm just gonna add roughly 50% onto the monthly car usage. Create, and you can see all the figures change below. As you can see here, the total amount of kilowatt hours on the cheap rate has gone up considerably. The peak rate has only gone up a fraction because we don't charge our car at the peak rate very much, only 5%. Uh, so around 14, 15,000 miles a year as opposed to nine to 10. The yearly cost has gone up, of course, because you're using more fuel, you're doing more miles, but the pence per kilowatt hour has dropped. Now 19 pence, 21, 22, so again, the more miles you do, and therefore charge at the cheap rate, the cheaper these become compared to something like the price gap. That's near as damn it, 1,200 pounds difference now instead of 800 and odd. Now, just out of curiosity, let me put my figures in because I'm quite unique, I guess, in the terms that I do a lot of miles, like I said, nearly 25,000 a year. I have a heat pump, so that naturally increases my um, electricity consumption, and I have home battery, 
which means I can charge that and the car at night at the cheap rate and power the house and heat pump, maybe not through the whole of winter, but power the house and the heat pump at the cheap rate. So it's, it's, it's nearly all coming from that cheap part rather than the peak part. I'll be honest, I didn't expect this much of a gulf. So you can see from this screenshot from my bill from March, this is my usage. 1,266 kilowatt hours from just the four hour window, because I'm currently still on Octopus Go. Only 153 kilowatt hours from the peak. It's ignoring solar because this is my grid consumption, not my house consumption. And look at the difference a time of day tariff makes. Nearly £6,000 on the price gap, average of 35 pence per kilowatt hour. <laughs> Nearly four grand better off in one year by being on the correct tariff. This is why I'm so insistent on people doing their own research. I'm a very high user. This is not normal. But look, 12 pence per kilowatt hour I will pay for everything I get from the grid. Yeah, if you ever want an advertisement as to what uh, a good tariff can do in terms of the difference, well, this is an extreme case, but here you go. If you're wondering why I've not done the OVO calculation, it's because, well, I don't have the figures for that because they only give me what the car uses at the cheap rate and the house uses the most expensive rate. So ultimately, I expect OVO to be somewhere between British Gas and the price cap because I don't exactly know what my house and car usage does separately over the year, well, I can't be bothered to find out, then I've just put a line through it. So that's why OVO isn't included. As I said earlier, there's an Octopus referral link. If you do decide to switch to Octopus, I'll put any instructions, if, or, if at all, in those pinned links in description and whatnot. But for me, depending on what you saw in the previous video at the average usage, is it worth going on a time of day tariff for you? Again, the spreadsheet will help you out as much as possible. It is basic, I'm not an Excel wizard or anything, but hopefully that will give you the more specific means to find out whether or not it's worth going on a tracker, a fixed rate, or a time of day one. And again, these do have the caveat of you need a smart meter, which I am very much in favor of, or we've ha always have been. How they rolled it out, very inefficient and costly, but the smart meter as a, as a thing, as a function, is a good thing because it gives you access to stuff like this. If that suddenly changes and uh, British Gas, which let's face it won't happen, but if British Gas suddenly bring a much better tariff out, then at the nearest opportunity I will switch to them. You need to play the game. Switch, it's what, 10, 15 minutes of your time and it is worth it as you can see here. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Uh, please subscribe and all that sort of stuff. If you want to click the join button for 99p a month, then that will support the channel. You'll get videos like this on a Sunday instead of a Friday, and there are members only uh, live stream at the end of every month to ask any questions or just have a chat, as well as occasional members only videos. So thank you for watching guys, see you soon.